Hey guys, welcome back to another exciting episode of All About You. In today's video, I will be discussing the T.O.P. Tournament of Power Super Rares. So, we will start off with the Prince of All Saiyans, the Red Vegeta, as we all know, Universe 7, Prince Vegeta. He is a very interesting card. When he's put into play, you have the option of being able to put one of your Universe 7 or Universe 6 battle cards from rest mode into active mode, so you can switch it. And then he gains triple strike and that card also gains triple strike for the duration of the turn, which is pretty nice. So you get a nice power boost of 10k and then you also get triple strike. So for one, he's a five cost, two red. So it's very easy for the most part to play him since there's only two red of commitment. And he has versatility to an extent because you can target up to two types of cards, which is Universe 7 and Universe 6 cards, battle cards. And with that being said, he can definitely end the game. He can literally create a board state where you have himself and another battle card swinging in for lethal. And another extra 10k on that can prove to be very, very vital. Especially if you can target a card that has, let's say, dual attack or triple attack or whatever. Something that can really push a lot of pressure. You could do some serious damage with that card. Target that and you can easily win the game having multiple triple strike attackers. So definitely keep that in mind when you're utilizing this card. Overall, I can say that this card, if I were to give it a scale from 1 to 10, 10 being the greatest, it has potential of definitely being an 8 out of 10 without even further going into depth of what it can do because this card can only get better as sets go along and it's definitely a major finisher for just five energy so that's definitely a good card all right guys now we're moving on to foreseen hit this bad boy is extremely powerful and many players are really getting in depth and talking about this card as being possibly the best card of the set and I can only agree with them. So for starters, he is a four cost card only requiring two red. Second of all, this card has double strike and he's a 20k power card. Now, he has an amazing effect. When this card is put into play from your hand, you can choose, you can choose up to two battle cards with 35k or less and warp them. Gone. This means you can target your opponent's free 10k boost vital cards like topos so cards that could be negates but that are battle cards it has tremendous versatility in what you can do to disrupt your opponent and to potentially put your opponent in a very very crucial moment of probably even gaming them that turn that you play that hit it warps them onto the end of your opponent's next turn so even if you don't game your opponent you can literally strip them off of resources and they cannot use them during their next turn. Like that is freaking amazing. They can't even use it during their turn, okay? So it's very, very powerful in what it can do. And this card can single-handedly steal games. So keep that in mind when you are utilizing this card and when you are facing up against it. You have to make sure that you prepare very thoroughly for a card like this to come out on the board. If you're not running yellow and you can't use Cold Bloodless, if you're not using Freezer Army, you have to make sure you play around this card and it may prove to be difficult in some situations. 
So I would have to give this card a 10 out of 10. Moving on to the next card. We have Relentless Super Saiyan Kale. Now, she is a very interesting card. First of all, she is a five cost battle card consisting of three red as her mandatory cost, which may prove to be a little difficult, which will restrict its usage. However, this card has evolved for three red and one generic. So even though it's heavy on the red, it definitely can prove to be a little less in the energy department if you're managed to evolve it. Now, this card has 25K attack, overall, so 25k power, it has a pretty nice effect to say the least with including double strike. When this card is put into play, you can KO all battle cards with uh, energy of 25k, not energy, with a power of 25k or less except for herself or a Khalifa. Now, this is the only thing that I have an issue with this card. It says or. I don't know if they meant and or as in that you don't need to KO her self or you have to actually pick one or the other. If she KOs herself in order to save a Khalifa or vice versa, the card may not be as good as I'm imagining it to be because of that keyword, but still it can do some devastating things in this format. It is literally a board wipe, especially when most players not playing heavy cost cards unless you're playing against like an Ultra Instinct deck or something out of the ordinary where it can EX evolve. So most decks are really susceptible to getting blown up with her effect. So that makes her a very good threat. She can literally reset the board without doing much. And what's so cool is, is that if you know you're gonna blow up the board, you can use your battle cards wisely use them for combo, utilize them for effects before you KO them, attack at your opponent before you KO them. You can do multiple plays before you get rid of them and your opponent's cards. So she is definitely a very good card. I would have to rate her between a six to seven out of 10 because of the fact that I'm not too sure in what interaction she will have. And or usually means as a choice, like you can do this or you can do that. You get what I'm saying guys and girls? So overall, six, seven out of 10, we can go with a 6.5 to keep it nice and simple. Moving forward, we have Beerus, Universe 7, Divine Vanquisher. For starters, he cost five energy. Too blue, so not too heavy on any specific cost for energy and relatively a mid-game card. Now, he is 25k, double strike. When he attacks a leader, your opponent must select either and including their Battlefield, energy area, and lastly but not least, hand. And this card, a cost of a total of six or greater. So an energy cost of six or greater, and boom, gone. Send them to the drop area. Now, that is pretty darn strong. However, there are flaws to this design. The hand, guys. When you utilize this card, the hand is an unknown area. So you must remember that when Beerus is attacking, you as the player 
You don't have to reveal any information from your hand. So that's already a major flaw. Giving you guys an example. Let's say you have no battle cards in play and you have four energy. Your opponent went first. And in your energy, you only have an energy pool of five or less, meaning that you have a bunch of one drops and maybe one two drop in your energy area. And you have no battle cards in play. That Beerus attacks you. They play that Beerus and they attack you. Because of the current circumstance, you have no battle cards in play, but you do have energy, but you only are showing energy of five, literally, not six. His effect will not go off, unfortunately. Same goes if vice versa. You have battle cards in play, and you have also low cost energy. If it does not reach six or greater, you do not touch nothing from your side of the field, including your hand, nothing. The only time this card can really attack your hand is if you meet the requirement. So if your opponent meets the requirement and you are utilizing this card when you attack with him, they already have to be showing six or greater in the energy or battlefield. If they are, your opponent can opt to discard cards from their hand to save their energy or battlefield. But if not, there, your effect will not do nothing at all. And if you're the controller of this card, your effect will not do nothing. So very interesting card. I really wanna see how it will end up playing out, but it already has a flaw in its design. So with that being said, I can only rate this card a seven out of 10. I wanna give it more, and it has potential to becoming extremely powerful. But because the hand is an unknown source, you can't really utilize it in the way that other players assumed or wanted it to be played. People were like, oh, can I, does it reveal your opponent's hand since it also targets hand? No, it does not. It's an unknown area. So without further ado, let's continue. We have Trio de Dangers, Bergamo. This freaking wolf is bad assery. An extremely powerful card for only costing four energy. However, three of those energy must be blue. Now, he has three effects. Three guys. For one, when this card is in rest mode, your opponent's battle cards can only attack this card. That's already powerful when he's in rest mode. He's a 20k battle card. So that already puts him up beyond your leader, which means that that's less commitment from your hand that you have to devote to guard battle cards excluding the leader. Now, his second effect. If you control the other two wolves on the board, they all gain barrier. That's broken. That is OP snapped in half, get your ship pushed in, broken. Okay? So with that being said, that's something that you have to watch out for. And the last effect, if it wasn't that, as it is, is already crazy. Every time this card is selected as an attack target, it gains 5K, 5K. So it moves into being a 25K when your opponent attacks it. And it stacks, guys, meaning that if it's attacked again, it gains another 5K and it's a 30K. This is insane. Oh my lord, of Chrisabella's words himself, that's broken. <laughs> 10 out of 10, I don't know what to say. It's just too damn good. Moving forward, we have Sun Goku, Hope of Universe 7. 
As it is, I already like this name. Now, looking at his energy cost, it is pretty darn high. He cost eight, three being green. That's steep, guys. However, he has EX Evolve, which is pretty darn crazy. For just one and placing two Universe 7 cards from your hand into the drop area. Then he has triple attack. Ladies and gentlemen, this card has triple attack. Now, without saying any more, he's 35k. He's already an animal. He's hitting extremely high numbers. And he has critical, guys and girls. Critical. Shit gets serious if this guy gets dropped on the board. Okay? And when this card attacks, if your leader card is green, you choose up to one card in your opponent's hand or battlefield and poof, send it to the drop area. That's pretty darn broken. Okay? And all you need to do to bring them out simply is EX Evolve over a Sun Goku with an energy cost of five or more. That's it. That's all it takes. Like, are we kidding? Like, that's super easy. I have to give him a nine out of 10. He's one of my favorite cards, hands down. He's a phenomenal card, to say the least. I'm going to dib and dab with him. He's a favorite and I can't wait to wreck havoc with that card. So let's move forward. Our next card is Maiden Squadron Leader Ribrian. Now, she is a really cool card. I do like the design that Bandai went with this. For starters, she is a five cost card, two being green. She has Evolve, which is two green and one generic. So not bad. She actually reduces the cost by two if you evolve her. So she becomes a very early game card. When a card evolves into this card, you KO one of your opponent's battle cards, period. Very solid. Now when you control her two sidekicks, shit gets real. When she attacks, you discard up to two of your opponent's cards from their hand. That is strong. And you're the one selecting them. So that's a random effect. Your opponent will lose two cards at random. That's pretty devastating. She is a hardcore hand control oriented card. Not to mention, she's hitting some stats. She's a 25K beater and that's pretty strong. This card easily gets a 7 out of 10. It does require a setup. The setup isn't too difficult, but nonetheless, it's not too hard for your opponent to react and KO those needed battle cards on the board. So with that being said, let's move on. The next card we will discuss is Lord Frieza. Frieza, Emperor of Universe 7. The art is really nice with this card, as most of the other ones previewed just before. And he is a 7 drop, 2 yellow. So he's a heavy drop. But our Frieza has EX evolved, just like Sun Goku. And it cost 1 and you have to place one Universe 7 from your hand into the drop area. And you can overlay him over a Frieza with a cost of five or greater. He has Triple Strike, so this card can close the game if need be. Permanent, if your leader card is yellow, your opponent's counter skills and non-keyword autos cannot be activated unless they place one card from their life into the drop area. That is very powerful, extremely. This is going to be a serious threat 
in the meta, if played correctly. I will discuss this card in depth in future videos, but I do want to keep this nice and short and condensed so you guys can get an overview of what each card does, okay? He's going to be utilized for sure. There will be many decks that will play this card, especially with the five drop Frieza that was previewed as well. And that one ain't half bad either. Moving on. Absolute Justice Jiren. Cool art, however, when I first looked at this card, I saw 10 energy cost. Whew. That's way too much. And then five of those bad boys have to be yellow. Not liking it. But he has 35k attack. So 35k power. And his effects are pretty interesting, which made me kind of like this card. I know a lot of players are not digging him, but I can see myself utilizing this card in some really useful decks. So moving forward, he has quadruple strike. Yes, I said quad. This means that this card, if it swings when you're awakened, because most leaders that are awakened, awaken at four or less life. If he swings at you when you awaken the regular way, you die if he hits you. <laughs> That's it, you gone, kapoof, you are done. Second of all, permanent, you reduce him you reduce his energy cost by one for each Universe 11 in your battle area. Now, the only problem I have with this is, is that unless most of those Universe 11 cards have barrier, it's not going to be too easy keeping a board of them because this format is very destructive currently. And I mean, you have to have a lot of them in order for him to come out early. But there is a lot of potential with this card and he can only get better as sets progress. And auto, when you play this card, choose all of your opponent's battle cards and energy in rest mode and place them into the drop area. If he comes out, that's it. Like your opponent's energy and battle cards are gone in rest mode. That's pretty powerful. Like he can literally just win the game by coming out. So if you can gear a deck that can play him very well in it, you have something that can finish the game consistently and extremely well. The problem is, is trying to make a deck that can play with him in a, the most useful and tactical way. I will give him a six out of 10, just based off the potential he has. This card has a lot of potential. So guys and girls, make sure that you explore this tournament of power set because it is very good. It's not as small as other players and people thought it would be. This set will pack a punch. It will change this format for sure. Certain decks will still play relatively the same without this core set, but other decks will thrive from this series. Thank you for watching this video. And as always, this channel is all about you.